All right, so we're gonna take a quick look at the motor braking circuit. When you have that uh, auto pusher integrated into the overall circuit, and we can take a look that we're still using the original pusher arm here. So I'm gonna swap this out for one of the printed versions. And uh, we'll put that in after we've taken a look at the circuit. So the motor braking circuit, all it really is, is a, it's a short. So as soon as the, uh, one of the switches toggles from normally open, which is when the circuit is now uh, receiving current, and it toggles back to normally closed when you release the switch, the braking line will create the short circuit that will instantly, well, almost instantly, stop the, uh, the motor that is receiving current from spinning. So you get that quick spool down time. And I'm wrestling with this thing unnecessarily. All right, so we take a look here, and you can see that there are two lines here. So depending on how you have your motors wired in, if you have the positives up in the front and you have the negatives up in the rear, then you can see that there are two lines spliced into the negative poles. So that second one is the brake line. And where that goes to is the, here, take a look. We can trace it here, here. We'll take this off too so we can see a little bit clearer. And I'm not gonna create a digital graphic but I can show the diagrams that I have sketched out that I use when I am uh, designing circuits or refining them, however you want to see it. So we can take a look here. I'm going to loosen this up as well. You can take a look and see how this works. If you want to keep the mechanical lock in place, which is actually not a terrible, not a terrible thing. Yeah, it's a little clicky, and uh, there is more resistance in there as opposed to just a direct... Uh, lever push or button push but uh, if anybody else is using it I can guarantee you that uh, unless if they use a lot of uh, blasters with the mechanical lock pulled out they are at some point going to pull the activator trigger which is going to jam the blaster when it tries to feed a dart into a non-spinning flywheel cage all right so take a look at this here And the reason why we're using this light gauge wiring for uh, here is uh, we don't actually need full speed. In fact, these motor these motors here are actually rated for uh, 1S, so we're feeding we're overfeeding them as it is. So the only thing you really need to worry about if you're going to use like a 1S motor, which is something that you'll find for uh, slot car motors, they're supposed to be really high RPM, but they only run off of the 1S tiny lipo packs. Uh, do I have one of those around? So it'll be powered by something like that normally. Now obviously we're going to be powering this entire blaster with a 2S pack, which means that you are overvolting it. And it does mean if you use a 1S motor, it will be burning out the brushes prematurely. But again, it's, it's all a matter of trade-offs. It's not that difficult to just swap in a new motor and uh, good to go again. If not, then you can use a uh, any any kind of 2S motor that you want, or even the stock ones if you want a slower rate of fire. <clears throat> so, take a look here, and you can see that there is a line here that goes directly to the negative pole of the XT60 connector, so the negative of the battery. And this normally closed line is the one that when the switch is released, is normally closed here, this is what is creating the short circuit to this motor here. So right here, normally closed, goes to the negative terminal of the 
feeder motor, creates short circuit there. On the pusher motor, or not the pusher motor, sorry, flywheel motor, we can see that the normally closed line goes to the flywheels. And again, you've, you've already seen the other side. If this still looks a little bit uh, looks a little bit messy, take a look at this diagram of the hyperfire. And what I may end up doing is taking a snapshot of that and blowing it up and putting it on freeze. But you'll notice that this is actually the same circuit, it's just in a different configuration. So we'll have the battery here, positive. You can ignore some of this. There's no voltmeter um, and there's no electronic speed controller in this. But battery, positive, is going to go to your normally open on your rev switch. Here is the normally closed pin here. Normally closed pin is going to go to the negative terminal of the flywheel motors. All right, And then the second line, the negative is going to go back to the negative terminal of the battery or XT60. So this is your brake line right here. Okay, and obviously this comm has to go to positive and also to the normally open of the pusher motor switch. Comm here is going to go to the positive terminal of the uh, pusher motor, of the feeder motor, and the negative is going to go to the normally closed. And the second is going to go back to the battery. So this right here, the normally closed to the negative of the motor, that is the second braking line, this short little one right here. And that would be this line right here. That's your braking line. So again, take a look. Normally closed, negative terminal, and you can use lighter gauge wiring for this. That is your short circuit brake line. On your rev switch, normally closed, and again, I'm using uh, I'm using a heavier gauge here, but it's not necessary. I've done this with a hyperfire using the stock lighter gauge wiring, and it works fine because it's not carrying current. All it's doing is breaking the circuit, or I should say, short circuiting the circuit. So normally closed, all the way to the negative terminal of the flywheels. That is pretty much the gist of it. Again, I'll uh, take some screenshots of the notes this is for the hyperfire. This is for the strife. And if we take a look at the strife light, it's going to look a little bit more, uh, a little bit more familiar here. Negative terminal. Here is your negative braking line, which goes to the normally closed on the rev switch. And on the pusher motor, we're going to see that we have the negative terminal here, and there's going to be a line going to the normally closed rev switch there. So hopefully that is uh, clear enough. Again, I'll take the screenshots and post them on their own stills at the end so you can pause and take a look at it. But I think it's more helpful if you see how it actually works in the wiring of the blaster itself.